Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and I've got a new discovery. While doing some research for a new project, I came across the artwork of Balu Caroli. And in some of his retro pieces, he used halftone dots in his gradients, and it led to a really cool look. Big halftone dots were used in the 60s on old printers and letter presses to ensure that colors didn't bleed into each other, and it led to a really, really cool period look. What exactly are halftone dots? They're dots made from gradients or halftones. What are halftones? They're anything that occupies the color spectrum between absolute black and absolute white. You can use halftone dots in three different areas. You can use them in background, you can use them in letter and object textures, and you can use them in art. And I'll show you how to do all of them, starting with the basics. In this video, you will learn the following. How to build and modify a gradient, how to import and scale an external image, how to use the color halftone effect, how to rasterize an image, the basic use of image trace, and the basic use of the select same tool. Again, as usual, I have talked way too much. Let's go. First thing we're going to do is we are going to create a new document. Our new document will be a letter sheet. It's going to have a width of 612 points, a height of 792 points. It's going to have three artboards. In Illustrator, as you know, artboards is the equivalent of pages. Next thing we want to do, because we're considering going to print with this, we're going to have the CMYK color mode. If we wanted to have the RGB color mode, all we need to do is click and select RGB color. Let's go ahead and get started with it. Let's click Create. Let's go ahead and zoom in on our first artboard. We do that by clicking on it and bringing the entire page into view. Do that by hitting Control-0. Before we get started, I want to mention a few things. First thing I want to mention is that we are using the Essentials Classic Workspace. In order to switch the Essentials Classic Workspace, all we need to do is go to Switch Workspace and select Essentials Classic. I like Essentials Classic because it shows me all the tools that I need to complete my piece most easily. Next thing I want to mention is that we are going to be using Smart Guides. To switch to Smart Guides, all you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides, or select Control U. Next thing I want to mention is that we are going to be using the bottom center of the page to offer tips and tricks, key command, and hotkey recommendations. With that in mind, we are producing this piece on a PC. If you're using a Mac, all you need to do whenever the control key is recommended is select the command key instead. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create colored halftone dots for use in a background, perhaps, or as a main page element. Here's how we go about doing that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool. We're going to click anywhere on our artboard, and let's create a rectangle that is 500 points wide by 500 points tall. Next thing we'll do is align it center horizontally and vertically. We do that by clicking the alignment tools at the top of our page. If you don't see that, simply select Window, Align, or Shift F7. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start with our gradient. First thing we're going to do is we are going to make our stroke transparent. Then we're going to bring the fill to our forefront. Don't worry about what color it is because we are changing it right now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our gradient tool. We'll double click on that. And then from the window that pops up, we are going to select our black and white gradient. With our black and white gradient selected, let's go ahead and start our drag from about 20% from the top and drag down to 20% from the bottom make it perfectly vertical, let's hold our shift key and let's drag down. That looks pretty good right there. Before we continue, we want to make sure that our black is completely black. The way we do that is we double click on our black in the gradient slider and we want to make sure that our K is set at 100%. If we want to take it a step further, we can always switch color modes to CMYK and make sure that it is 100% as well. Let's click off of that. A quick mention, if you're using the RGB color mode, be sure that your black is set to R0, G0, and B0. Normally it's set a little bit off that. Let's go ahead and build our halftone dots. 
The way we do that is we go to Effect from the top bar. Let's scroll down to Pixelate, and let's select Color Halftone. Quick mention on this. Notice at the top, we've got our max radius. That's the largest size of our dot at full color. With that in mind, what we want to do in this case, let's go ahead and select our max radius at 50. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the screen angles for all of our channels is the same. In this case, let's go ahead and make our screen angles zero on all of the individual channels, just like that. Let's click OK. And there you go. There's our half tune dots right there. Before we color them, let's go ahead and talk about what we can do with our half tone dots. Note first that our dots are perfectly vertical. That's because we set our screen angle to zero. Now, if we want to change the direction of our half tone dots, we can do a couple of things. The first thing we can do is we can undo by selecting Edit, Undo, or Control Z. We can go back to our effect. Select Pixelate and select Color Halftone again. This time around, we can just go down and switch all of our channels to a different number. In this case, what we're looking to do is go to 45 degree angles. Let's go ahead and do that here. So in our first channel, again, 45 degrees, and we're going to do the same thing for all the other channels. Click OK. And notice that the direction of our halftone dots is now at a 45 degree angle. What if we want to change our halftone dots without undoing our work. Well, the most efficient way to do it is to select our appearance window. You can select it from the right sidebar right here by clicking here. I'll close that once again. Or you can go to Window, Appearance, or Shift F6. Once our appearance window is open, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and notice that color halftone appears within our shape appearance. Let's click on that and note that our halftone goes away temporarily. But now we can change our halftone preferences once again. Let's go ahead and change our max radius to 70 from 50. Click OK. And notice once again that our halftone dots have changed. What if we wanted to change the style of our gradient? Well, we can do that easily by clicking on our gradient window once again. And let's instead switch from linear to radial. That's not a bad start right there, but it's not exactly what we want. What if we want just a black halftone circle in the middle of our image? Here's how we do that. Let's take our black and let's drag it over towards the middle just like that. And let's add another gradient point on the right side. Once we've done that, let's double click on our gradient point. Let's take the K value and bring it all the way down to pure white just like that. Let's click off of our shape. And there you go. That looks pretty good right there. What if we wanted to expand the black? Perhaps let's change the gradient and move it out a little bit so it thickens up at the black middle part. That looks a little bit better. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now that we've got the shape that we want, let's go ahead and color it out. This is a two-step process. First thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our gradient. Next, we're going to go to Object, Rasterize. Now, when our Rasterize window comes up, we want to change our resolution from 300 points per inch to Other. Once that comes up, let's change our resolution to 600. That's going to give us more dots to work with when we trace out our image. Click OK. We've now rasterized our image. Let's go ahead and trace out our work. Let's go again to Object. Image Trace, Make and Expand. Click OK. And there you go. Our image is now officially traced. If you want to see your work, hit Control Y or go to Outlines. Deselect. It's exactly what we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and color it. Let's select our image once again. Let's Escape Outlines. And now let's go ahead and ungroup our art. Notice that all of our pieces are grouped together. We'll go to Object. Ungroup or Shift Control G. Let's go ahead and deselect our image once again. And now let's go ahead and select the white part. Once we've selected the white, we want to select everything else containing white. Instead of clicking throughout our image, what we're going to do instead is we'll select Select, Same, Fill Color. 
note right away that everything with a white fill has now been selected. So let's go ahead and change the color. What we're going to do here is we're going to change it to a light blue. We're going to do that by clicking our fill, selecting the blue that we want, and let's drag it all the way down to a light that we like. That looks pretty good right there. Click OK. And note that it goes gray. It does not go blue. That's because when we create our halftone dots, Illustrator defaults to a grayscale color build. The way we do that is we click on our color window, we click on our drop down, and we select CMYK. Let's go ahead and deselect. That looks a lot better right there. Note if you're building for RGB, make sure that the color you select is RGB instead. Next thing we're going to do is let's click on anything containing black. Once we've selected that, we again go select, same fill color. Note that everything with a black fill has now been selected. Next step is let's double click on our fill color once again. Let's select our blue and pick out that blue color that we like. That looks pretty good right there. Click OK. And again, it goes to grayscale. Let's go back to our color window and change our color makeup to CMYK once again. Let's deselect and click off of our image. And that is exactly what we're going to be going for. Last thing we want to do, let's drag across our entire piece. And let's go to Object, Group. Let's deselect. And for this one, just this one, we're done. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add halftone dots to type. So let's add the type first. Let's grab our Type tool. Let's click anywhere on our artboard and let's write half tones. Once that's done, let's select all of our type and let's change the character type from Myriad Pro perhaps to Bebus. If you don't have Bebus or Bebus Regular or Bebus Kai on your machine, all you need to do to get it is to visit fontsquirrel.com and download it from there. You can see the link right down below. Once we've got Bevis, let's go ahead and increase our type size to 120 points. That looks pretty good right there. Let's grab our selection tool and let's align it to the center of the artboard, both horizontally and vertically, just like that. That looks perfect to me. Let's deselect. Now let's get with the business of adding our halftone dots. First thing we're going to do is we are going to grab our rectangle tool and we're going to create a rectangle that is slightly larger than our type. That looks pretty decent right there. Don't worry about the color once again. We're going to be using our gradient tool to fix that. So once again, let's make sure that our fill is selected and let's double click on our gradient tool that will bring up our gradient window. And from the gradient window, let's go ahead from the drop down, select our white to black gradient. That looks pretty good right there. With our gradient still selected and our gradient tool still up, Let's go ahead and drag from about 20% from the top of our shape to 20% from the bottom. That looks pretty good right there. Now, once we've got that gradient set and sorted, let's go ahead and create our halftone dots. Again, we're going to go to Effect, Pixelate, Color Halftone. And let's change our max radius from 70 all the way down to 14. Let's go ahead and keep our channel angles at 45 degrees. If you want to change that, feel free to do it in this window or in the appearance window. Let's click OK. That's exactly what we're looking for right there. Now that we've got that set, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Next, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and take the steps to tracing the image. The way we do that is we go to Object, Rasterize. Again, let's keep the color mode the same. Let's keep the resolution at 600 points per inch. That's other 600 points per inch. Let's keep the background white because we always need that. And let's click OK. Once it's been rasterized, you'll notice what happens to the size of the shape. It expands. Once you see that, let's go back to Object, Image Trace, Make and Expand. Click OK. Now that that's done, you can see clearly that our image has been traced. Let's go ahead and go Object, Ungroup. That breaks up our artwork elements. Let's click off of our shape, and then let's click on the white of our shape. 
Next, we go select, same fill color. Note again that everything with a white fill has been selected. And let's go ahead and change our fill from white to perhaps a dark yellow. That looks pretty good right there. Let's select that, click OK. Note once again that it goes gray. We remedy this by opening our color window, clicking on the drop down, and changing from grayscale to CMYK. Let's go ahead and deselect. That's a lot better right there. Let's do the same thing with black. We'll click on anything black, select, same, fill color. Let's go ahead and change it from black to brown. Double click our fill color. Select our yellow once again. That looks good right there. Let's pull it back to a darker brown. That looks good right there, I think. Click OK. Again, it goes gray. We go to color, menu, CMYK. Let's deselect our shape. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's bring it in to our type. Next thing we're going to do with our selection tool still selected, we are going to drag across our artwork just like that, making sure that everything is selected. We'll go object, group, or control G. Once we've got that, let's bring our art to the back. The way we do that is we'll hover over our art, right click on it, arrange, send to back. You can also go to object, arrange, send to back as well, or by selecting shift control left bracket. All right, now that we've done with that, let's go ahead and bring our shape behind our type. All we're going to do is click and drag it up. We'll hold the shift key to keep our pole completely vertical. That might be just right, right there. Let's go ahead and deselect. I think that's the perfect position. So let's go ahead and select both our halftone art and our type by dragging across them just like that. Once that's done, all we need to do is go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, or Control-7. Let's go ahead and deselect. That looks good. And with this step, we are done. All right, let's do one more thing. This time around, let's add halftone dots to imported art. First thing we do is we want to bring in that art. Let's go ahead and select File, Place. I think I'm going to do it with Ariana Grande this time. Let's click on that. Let's select Place. And you notice that the image attaches to my cursor. All we need to do right there is click anywhere on our artboard. Note that it comes in as massive. Images oftentimes do, that's not a problem. We're going to continue as if it is scaled normally. We're going to align horizontally to center, vertically to center, and then let's go ahead and scale our piece down. We double click on our scale tool, and let's scale it down uniformly to 1%, or of course, to whatever your image is. Click OK, and there you go. One quick mention about the artwork that we've imported. It doesn't matter if you've got a grayscale or color image. The thing you're looking for in an image that you want to convert to halftone dots is contrast. Note the level of contrast in this particular image right here. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get to the business of creating halftone dots with an imported image. The way we do that is we go straight to Effect, Pixelate, Color Halftone. Note from our previous exercise, we've got a maximum radius of 14 pixels. Let's go ahead and go with that. Let's keep our screen angles the same at 45 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. Click OK. Notice that while we've got our halftone dots, that the model, in this case Ariana, is not clearly visible. So how do we fix that? Well, let's go ahead and go into our appearance window so we don't have to worry about undoing. Let's click it right here. Let's select color halftone. And from there, instead of a 14 pixel max radius, let's take it down to six. I think that might work a little bit better. If not, we can change it again. Click OK. Let's go ahead and deselect our image. That looks much better. Note that this is exactly the look that we're going for. Let's go ahead and rasterize and then image trace our image. We'll do that once again by selecting our art. Click Object, Rasterize. Again, let's keep our color mode at CMYK. Let's make our resolution to other at 600 points per inch. Let's click OK. And with an image, note that you won't see any expansion of the size like you've seen in the other pieces. That's OK. Don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and trace our image. We do that by going to Object, 
Image Trace, Make and Expand. Click OK to the pop-up menu. Let Illustrator do its work. There you go, you can see our artwork is fully traced. Let's continue by selecting Object, Ungroup. That breaks the white from the black. Let's deselect and let's go ahead and zoom in to one of the corners. That looks pretty good right there. And let's go ahead and change this piece to a yellow and red contrast. Let's go ahead and click on a white part of our image. Go to Select, Same, Fill Color. Once that's been selected, we know that all of the white elements have been selected. Let's double click on our fill color and let's go to a yellow that we like. That looks pretty good right there. Select that, click OK, and notice that again, our color changes to gray. Let's go up to color, click on the color dropdown, select CMYK, let's deselect our image, let's bring it all into view. That's a good start right there. Let's change the black to red the way we do that. Once again, is let's zoom in on a black element of our image. Let's click on it. Let's go back to select, same fill color. Once that's done, let's double click on our fill color and let's go to nice bright red. We're not gonna go too far from there. That looks great right there. Click OK. Note that it goes gray. Go back to our color window, click on the drop down, and go back to CMYK. Let's bring our entire page into view. It's exactly what we're looking for. Let's click off of our image. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's finish this out by dragging across our entire image. Object, Group, or Control G. Let's deselect. And there you go. And we are done. Well done. Now play with this effect and see how you can incorporate it into your own artwork. Tons of different uses from retro to modern. Now with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace.